Hey, how's it going guys? It's your boy Bernie here, bringing you yet another video here in the charge, giving the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinion. And before we get started on to today's topic, talking about Luka Dantich and also the Puma signings, go and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, go and check out our awesome content that we have out there. We have videos talking about the New York Knicks. We got videos talking about Kyrie Irving. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go to New York? My boy Pete does an excellent video on that, so go and check that out. But right now, we got to talk about the Luka Dantich situation. That is, of course, the Mavs. Magic and Nuggets are trying to move up to that number three spot to select Luka Dantich. The Atlanta Hawks are very well in control in the direction of the number three pick as they zero in on either selecting Luka Dantic or trading the slot to a team looking forward to moving up to get him. Now, teams know right now that they have to get the number three pick to get Luka Dantic, and that is, of course, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, who is a very excellent NBA insider. You always want to take his word as gospel in terms of NBA news and rumors. So... We also have a thing talking about how the Mavericks at five have been knocking at the door. They really want Luka Doncic, especially number five. They know that if he falls below that, the Memphis Grizzlies are probably going to be getting him. And also talking about the Orlando Magic and even Denver Nuggets are interested in him. And I think those three teams are going to be very excited if they do end up getting Luka Doncic. If you go to the Mavs, you have Dennis Smith Jr. You have a couple pieces there. Adding Luka Doncic could help you solidify getting that number one guy. Maybe in next year's draft, you get the number three guy or number two guy, depending on how you see Dennis Smith Jr. Obviously, he's a very athletic guard, very quick like Westbrook, quick like Derrick Rose was back in his heyday. So having a guard like that, having Luka Doncic would be great. If we look at the Magic, having Aaron Gordon as the number two or number one piece and having Luka Doncic as the number one or number two piece, you could kind of go 1A, 1B with them. That would also be a great thing for them as well. Obviously, they wouldn't be able to contend in a couple of years, but it's a very promising sign to have Luka Doncic there. I want to know, though, if Orlando is too small of a market for him because there have been rumors that he hasn't been, doesn't want to work out for some certain teams, and I think that's just been the trend in this NBA draft is that a lot of guys, I think Mo Bamba kind of declined a one-on-one -on -one individual workout with the Sacramento Kings, I believe that was the team, and also the Denver Nuggets talking going back to Luka Doncic. He would be an excellent fit. When you have the two guards there, you have Gary Harris, you have a lot of those guys, along with Paul Millsap, who's an aging veteran, but still can give you valuable minutes. Adding him can really make that team go over the hump and get to that final playoff push that they're looking for. I think it would take a lot to trade for that number three pick for them, especially when they're at, like, what, 14, I believe. So it's going to be a very big jump. I don't know what pieces you'd have to give up, but if you could give up the least amount of pieces along with that 14th pick, I think you'd do it. But... I think the Atlanta Hawks and the Sacramento Kings would be dumb if they don't take Luka Doncic. Me and Pete have been really praising Luka Doncic. I really love his game. I think he's one of those guys that his game translates to the NBA. And rarely do I ever talk about that, about an uh, international guy. There's been a couple instances where it hasn't really worked out well. But I think Luka Doncic will work out well because he's played almost the same amount of games as an NBA player. He's played against Chris Tapp Porzingis as well when he was on the national team with Slovenia. So to me, I think we got to look at it as Luka Doncic should be the second pick, honestly. The Sacramento Kings, I talked about it in the video, and I'm very disappointed in the Sacramento Kings because I called them the biggest winners in this draft because you're either going to get Luka Doncic or DeAndre Ayton. But if you're going to keep continuing this kind of, well, you know, let's go Marvin Bagley, the problem with Marvin Bagley is he's a great player and I'd have nothing against him, but I just think that Luka Doncic could do so much more. I think his floor is also higher, but so is Marvin Bagley. I think their floors are high, but I still think the ceiling for Luka Doncic is even higher than it would be for a guy like Marvin Bagley. And that's not to say I don't like Marvin Bagley. I think he's okay. But I just think having a guy like Luka Doncic, who is a wing player, I think you have to win with the wing players. I understand that I talk about the bigger, stronger athletes, the guy you want to take, but centers in today's game just don't do anything anymore. It's more of the wing guy, like a Kevin Durant, a LeBron James, DeMar DeRozan, some of those guys scoring baskets, doing everything for their team. That's going to win you championships, and I think Luka Doncic fits that mold perfectly, and it's going to be dumb for the Kings not to take him, and it's also going to be dumb for the Hawks not to take him because the Hawks don't have anybody really there to really build a team around. Dennis Schroeder is looking to get traded. He doesn't want to be there anymore. You have John Collins, who I believe is like a number two or number three guy, hustle guy, so... I really think getting Luka Doncic is probably going to be the best bet for the Hawks if they want to become a better team in a couple years and not wait and do a 76ers and trust the process where it took, you know, years to come to get those players to really have a great team. 
But in other news that we got to talk about, and that is, of course, the Puma signing. We got a lot of guys signing to Puma. Obviously, we know that Jay-Z has become the head of creative of Puma basketball sneakers. And Puma hasn't been relevant in a very long time in the sneaker world in terms of basketball apparel and just basketball performance sneakers and i want to ask you guys a question have you ever owned a pair of pumas and what is your experience with pumas i've owned one pair before they're okay i think i had soccer cleats from them but to me problem with it is that even though they signed guys like trey young michael porter jr they signed a lot of guys marvin bagley deandre ayton I'm just curious and interested to see if Jay-Z can really build a brand for them because no one has been able to crack the Nike market. If we remember back in the heyday before Air Jordan was there, you know, it was a ton of shoes. You know, you had Converse, you had some Nike shoes, you had some Adidas, but it was really Converse was taken over. But then Nike with the Jordan brand and how everything went out about the advertisements and the commercials and just how they really did the rollout for Michael Jordan and the Nike basketball brand. They haven't looked back ever since. I mean, there's, they haven't really checked back and see, oh, you know, is someone catching up to us? Because no one really has caught up to Nike and the shoe apparel and all this other stuff because they come out with quality content that the kids like. You have your favorite athletes signed there. Jordan was signed to them. LeBron is signed to them. Kobe was signed to them. Kevin Durant is signed to them. So with those guys being signed to them, I just don't see any way possible that Puma can really catch up to them. The only way I could see it is if they come with some crazy innovative design. I just think for Puma, for basketball shoes, I think it's a little too late in the market to try and crack at them. They had it to come out before. I mean, obviously, you know, Puma was still relevant back in the day because they did have basketball shoes. But you had to come out in the early 2000s or something like that because, I mean, today's game or today's sneakers you're only going to have a few people wearing the pumas a lot of people are going to go to nike they're going to go to adidas as the two main competitors because those guys make quality shoes obviously adidas has the uh, the boost technology if you guys are sneaker heads you know what i'm talking about the boost technology is a very famous thing that got nike i'm sorry adidas back on the map i mean also the endorsement of kanye west whether you like him whether you dislike him he boosts the sales of Adidas. I mean, no one was wearing the Ultra Boost. Everyone was calling the Ultra Boost a dad shoe until he made it popular and then everyone started wearing it. And then he made his easy shoes and then it just became that. And I think he's also set to come out with a basketball shoe at some point. So we'll see how that looks as well. But I want to know your guys' opinion on the Puma thing. Can Puma overtake Nike? Can they overtake even Adidas or Under Armour in that third or fourth spot? I would love to know your guys' opinion. And if you are... A fan of Puma or do you like to try new different basketball shoes? Are you going to be trying these new Puma shoes by Jay-Z that he's creating? Obviously, there's been some photos also of Rudy Gay wearing them and also playing in them. So I'd be very curious to see what you guys think of them if you have worn them or if they're not out yet. Let me know what you think of the design. Are they as bad as the Steph Curry Nurse shoes or are they a little bit cooler and they're more on, on the lines of Nike? I'd love to know your guys' opinion on that. But anyway, guys, this has been your boy Bernie here on The Charge. Give me the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinions. Go and hit the subscribe button. Go and check out our other videos. Hit that like button and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace! <laughs>